I passed my AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam, and here's how. In this video, I'll be walking you through how I passed and the study resources I used to prepare for this exam. In one of my previous videos, I showed you guys how I booked the exam and how I'm gonna be starting my AWS journey with the Cloud Practitioner exam. So glad to say that I've taken the exam and passed, and now I'm gonna be sharing how I pass and the resources I used so that you can go away and use those same resources and pass the exam also. So for those that watch the channel, you know that I am an Azure guy. I'm very much focused on Azure and that is the cloud platform that I'm most familiar with. So AWS is definitely new to me. However, there's a lot of overlap between different cloud platforms. So I already had a good understanding of cloud technology before studying for the AWS exam. So firstly, a little bit about the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. This exam provides a basic understanding of cloud IT services and how they are used in the AWS cloud. The certification tests your knowledge on the core AWS services and their uses, billing and pricing models, security concepts, and it also tests how the cloud impacts your business. The exam is 90 minutes long and you'll have 65 questions to answer within those 90 minutes. And these questions will be multiple choice questions and multiple response questions. The exam is scored between 100 and 1000 and the pass mark for this exam is a 700. My score for the exam was 780 and it's a decent score but I could have definitely done a bit better. Like I always say, it doesn't matter if you get 1000 over 1000 or 701 over 1000, as long as you get over the pass mark which is 700, you pass the exam and you get your certification. How long did I study for this exam? In total, it took me about 10 hours to study for this exam. This 10 hours was not in one go. It was spread over two and a half weeks. My study time focused on three main types of resources. I had one course, one mobile app, and two mock exams. And I'll be providing the details for these resources later in the video, so stay tuned. So yes, I took the exam in 10 hours of study time and this was spread over two and a half weeks. However, this is likely to be different for each individual. I don't recommend to anyone to use just 10 hours unless you already have a great understanding of cloud computing and you've worked in that area already. And perhaps there's some overlap from another cloud service that you're already used to using like GCP or Azure then you probably won't have to study for as long as if you're completely new to cloud. But let's say if you already had some experience in the tech industry, but you are new to cloud computing, it would make sense for you to study for about 15 to 20 hours. And let's say you're completely new to tech in general, you've never worked in the tech industry, and you're just starting out and you wanna learn about cloud, then it would make sense for you to study probably 30 plus hours. So this definitely varies depending on your experience. But keep in mind these baselines, but only you can really tell when you're ready for the exam. When you're doing really well on the mock test, you're familiar with the questions, you're scoring highly in the tests that you take online, then you're ready to take the exam. So now for the study resources that I use for the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. The main resource I used to prepare was a course on Pluralsight. This was a course by a guy called David Tucker, and I really recommend this course as it was the main course that I used to study for the exam and it pretty much provided me with everything I needed to pass the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. Pluralsight is like a hub with loads of different courses on. You pay a monthly fee to use it and when you pay that monthly fee, you have access to multiple courses on multiple certifications, multiple bits of technology. However, there is a free trial for Pluralsight and it runs for about 10 days. So if you're able to go through an eight hour course in about 10 days, then definitely take that course and use that to study for your AWS Cloud Practitioner. The course is about eight hours in total. However, the course is about six hours with two hours of practice questions at the end of the course. This course definitely has pretty much everything you need as it's got the content and it's got the questions to help you study for the exam. I watched the course on the 1.5, so less than the time that I was studying for it. So it took me roughly six hours to go through the course as well as the questions afterwards. The study questions after the course were really, really good. So these were provided as a sort of mock exam. You're able to download a PDF and take this as a mock exam 
and then go back onto the course where the instructor runs through each of the answers on the test you've taken and he also provides detailed explanations on each answer to help you study and to understand the next time you come across a similar question either on the exam or on another question. So if you'd like to use this course to study for your AWS Cloud Practitioner exam, please do, but make sure you cancel the free trial subscription so you don't get charged for the months that you won't be using the course. I also wanna give a special shout out to another course, which is on YouTube for completely free. And this is from Free Code Camp. This is a really long and really good course to study for the exam. I did prefer the Pluralsight course. Of course, that is a paid course that I was using the free trial for. Watched the first 30 minutes of the Free Code Camp course on YouTube. And I decided that the Pluralsight one was a little bit better for me. I understood the instructor better and I just really liked the way the course was set up. Even though it was a free trial, I knew that I could finish it in 10 days. So I went for the Pluralsight course instead. Last but not least, the mobile app. Mobile apps for certifications are great because you can use them anywhere. You can use them when you're going for a jog. You can take those questions when you're taking a walk in the park. You can take them when you're on the train or when you're in the Uber. It's just really helpful to have those questions going on your phone so you can continue to study and practice and take those questions from wherever you are. So this mobile app was really good. You do have to pay to get the full subscription. I only used the first few questions of this app and I thought they were really good and they had some great explanations. So if you're willing to go ahead and pay for questions to take to prepare you for the exam, so definitely go ahead and take this one. This is the best one I saw. I did look at a few others. Um, this one is really good and I'm not being paid or sponsored by them. <laughs> So all the resources, courses, apps, or mock tests are all gonna be mentioned in the description for this video. So if you're looking to take any of these, please just go down to the description and click the links and find out exactly where you can find these courses and tests and apps. And be sure to use these as you're preparing for your AWS certified cloud practitioner exam. And the final study resource, which I wanna mention is the free practice questions on Wiz Labs. There are about 30 plus practice questions on this Wiz Labs website. And these questions are quite similar to the questions which you'll find on the exam. So do check this out and hopefully this can help you as you prepare. Thank you guys for watching another video. I'm so glad to have passed this exam and added it to the certifications I have. I'm taking so much more and I hope to be posting regularly on the exams that I'm taking. If you're interested in IT certifications or just in IT and IT careers in general, things to do with cloud engineering and cybersecurity, then do subscribe to my channel and take a look at some of the other videos that I've got on the channel. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.